I'm Mary Beth Brangan of the Ecological Options Network, E.ON. Uh, we've been official interveners uh, on behalf of the public for uh, the smart meter, so-called smart meter me uh, proceeding. And uh, given the apparent decision, we feel we've been playing in a rigged game and granting of only individual opt-outs is meaningless since individual homes will be islands in a sea of radiation. Whoa, I like. <laughs> we have seen hundreds of public testimonies and hundreds of scientific studies uh, that have been ignored by this commission. It's a captured regulatory agency that is not concerned with the public health, but only with industry profits. This is a technocratic, anti-democratic decision and will do nothing but increase public opposition. The movement is growing across the United States and across the world. So we're not going to stand for this. I want to uh, introduce the mother of our movement, the, <laughs> the grandmother now, uh, Sandy Maurer of the EMF Safety Network Coalition. And come on over here, Sandy. Sandy was the uh, person who actually began the whole movement. She did the original research and uh, alerted her community and had the first community meetings in Sonoma County. And her network has grown and her database, her important database of um, fires and of uh, victims uh, who've been injured by these meters um, is very, very important for the whole movement. Thank you so much, Sandy, and I'd like to hear what you have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Mary Beth. <clears throat> I just want to acknowledge that there was a group of us who started the campaign against smart meters in the city of Sebastopol, and we were guided by the wisdom of Cindy Sage and Blake Levitt and other scientists who knew that this would be a problem. We didn't know the enormity of the problem until uh, people started calling us, complaining, sending emails of complaints of smart meter health problems. And then we discovered there were also that smart meters were linked to fires. This movement, this opposition has grown from Sonoma County to the all of California, to the whole of the United States, to Canada and to Australia. And now it's, uh, it's starting in Europe where they're deploying smart meters. People are opposing smart meters wherever they're deployed. There are health complaints from all over the world and the fire complaints are there as well. The EMF Safety Network has been working at the CPUC for over four years to obtain safety on smart meters. Our efforts have been thwarted, at, repeatedly thwarted. <clears throat> the CPUC has failed its responsibility to ensure the safety, safe utility service at reasonable rates. Our rates are going up, they are not going down. They, they've lied about how smart meter we're gonna lower our rates. Today they're approving a half billion dollar rate increase for PG&E. The CPUC, headed by Michael Peavy, who presided over almost all of the smart meter uh, proceedings here at the CPUC, has colluded with PG&E on smart meters. In 2010, the head of the smart meter program, Bill Devereaux, used a fake name, Ralph, and spied on our groups. PG&E gave redacted copies of that investigation to the media. They revealed that Ralph was sharing his findings with Maria Zafar, who was the public face on smart meters. When we sent a records request to the CPUC for the, the emails between Zafar and Devro, Zafar failed to report it. PG&E was fined $390,000 for that scandal, and the CPUC should have been investigated for their role. That investigation also revealed that there were emails, a series of emails, that revealed that PG&E was discussing the work of the EMF Safety Network with CPUC while we were in an open proceeding. That was a violation of ex parte rules. We have asked them for unredacted copies of those emails and they are withholding this. 
We also learned that PG&E trained the Consumers Affairs Branch how to respond to smart meter complaints. So if a customer complained to PG&E, they'd get the exact same response and PG &E, uh, the CPUC just parroted the lies that PG&E was telling the customer. They'd say, oh, smart meters are safe, smart meters only transmit once an hour, smart meters transmit four to six times a day. The CPUC said the same thing. Lies. 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 Oh, lies. 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 In 2012, a PG&E whistleblower told the CPUC judge that smart meters were causing fires and that PG&E knew it. Media reports from California and beyond have linked smart meters to fires. California lawsuits have been settled with, ga with gag orders. Two fire department captains reported that smart meter fires were happening, one at the meter and two in the electrical wiring at a surge protector. These people have been ignored and not only that, they have to pay to not have one of these things on their home. The CPUC claims, wrote a report to the governor and the legislator that they had investigated smart meter fires. In 2014, they wrote a report to the governor saying that they investigated smart meter fires. When we sent a records request act to the CPUC for the details of, invest of that investigation, well, guess what? They refused to give it to us. We deserve to know if they did a smart meter fire investigation, we deserve to know the details of that investigation. We're talking about the health and safety of millions of Californians. It was Michael Peavy who ordered PG&E to create a pay to opt out program. A pay to opt out program wrongly blames the customer. It's extortion. It ignores health and safety complaints. It ignores requests from 57 cities and counties, including the city of San Francisco. The city of San Francisco asked for a moratorium. They asked for a no-cost opt-out. Local rights. It ignores the reasons customers are refusing smart meters. It does not resolve customer complaints. It violates PUC codes, local laws, property laws, constitutional, customer, and disability rights. Customers should not have to pay to ensure safety in their own home. The CPUC should be investigated for their collusion with PG&E on smart meters. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Sandy. And now I'm going to introduce Josh Hart, who began Stop Smart Meters! Exclamation point. Don't forget the exclamation. <laughs> right. We we won't forget that. Um, and Josh has shown real leadership in this movement and has not only. Um, taken the the gospel of anti-smart meters across the country but across the Atlantic. So we welcome Josh. Thank you MB. Thanks everyone for being here. A lot of you have traveled very far to be here so we really you know appreciate it. It does mean a lot to, to turn out to these things to at least bear witness. Uh, I don't think anyone's under the impression that we're going to change their minds today. I think this is a pretty much a set uh, decision that is going that, that they're attempting to take away our rights. Uh, but by being here, it shows that the public is not happy uh, with with what's going on. Uh, you know, PV's last day today. He's leaving under a toxic cloud of corruption. Yes. He needs to, uh, you know, instead of going to the golf course to retire, he needs to go to San Quentin for the crimes that he has committed uh, and the other commissioners and uh, uh, executives of PG&E. They all need to be prosecuted. Um, it's no accident that PV's last day is, is the approval of the uh, final smart meter opt-out program. This is his coup de grace. There's so many different uh, 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 parts and segments to this movement. Last night, I was at the San Francisco Public Library to see uh, the screening of Mobilize. Uh, people are waking up about the health threats related to their cell phones, about how brain tumors uh, are, are happening for a reason, and that is the radiation exposure. Uh, we are linked uh, with those uh, campaigns. Uh, campaigns against cell towers, against uh, against smart meters. We are all linked in an international movement to stop uh, wireless technology and the abuse of wireless technology with no regard for the non-thermal effects. I think that's really the key key here. You know, charging people to avoid harm is what the mob does. It's what 
uh, corrupt officials like like PG&E and what PV does. He's been called by his own employees here at the CPUC uh, a corrupt mob boss, and the environment here has been called sleazy by the very employees who work here at the PUC. But, you know, as the public, we have an obligation to listen to those employees. They know what goes on here. They know the sleaze. They know the rot. And if it was just uh, a sleazy environment, that would be one thing. But this sleaze results in people's death. You know, people would be alive today if it weren't for the abuses and the cover-ups by this commission. Larry Nickel would be alive today. Michelle Sherman would be alive today. Those two died in fires started by smart meters uh, in California, and Michelle died in, in Reno, Nevada. we got to remember those people. Uh, it, it's why we're here. Uh, we're not here for, for some abstract policy. We're here to defend uh, individual rights and how individual people are being harmed. And um, let's not forget that. This year I've had the opportunity uh, and the privilege to travel throughout the United States and I can tell you right now that people in Colorado, in North Carolina, in Georgia, in Florida, uh, all over the place, Texas, St. Louis, Missouri, Chicago, Seattle, they are with us today. They are supporting what we're doing. Uh, they are looking at California. And, uh, and, we are, and they are strengthening their grassroots movements in those local places. So this is a, a growing movement. Uh, the smart meter uh, uh, deployment has, has opened people's eyes to the general health threat of wireless technology, and that is not going away. Uh, this is a, a knowledge and an awareness that will eventually translate to policy changes with regard to how people are exposed and what kinds of exposures we can force on people and what, and what rights people have to live uh, 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 away from Wi-Fi. You know, there have been uh, discussions in the media, uh, oh, people have a, a human right to have Wi-Fi. You know, but when people are suffering, when people have headaches, when people can't sleep in their own apartments, uh, uh, you know, the, the right to be free of Wi-Fi and those damaging uh, 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 EMF radiations uh, is, is more important, obviously. So today, uh, we're here to give PV a send-off. We're here to tell him that uh, he does not represent the public, uh, that this is a corporate uh, uh, a regulatory agency collusion that is undermining our rights to privacy, our rights to safety, and our rights to health. And if you don't have health, you don't have much. We've been speaking and saying the same things to the CPUC for four and a half years now. And despite the thousands of people who've complained of health issues and the uh, peer-reviewed science, they have ignored us. Thank you. And um, I'm representing the United Public Workers for Action and No Nukes Action because uh, the same commission has allowed, uh, allowed San Onofre to operate illegally when it was leaking radioactive water. And they helped the company, Southern California Edison, cover up the leak of this radioactive material. And then they want to make the ratepayers pay for the accident. And this is the, this is the role of the California Public Utility Commission. They're also continuing to allow Diablo Canyon uh, nuclear plant to operate even though it's on an earthquake, earthquake fault. So what we're talking about here, as others have said, is systemic corruption. The uh, utility uh, commissioners who are appointed by the governor, it's not an, a democratic process. One governor who gets money from these same utilities is appointing uh, some representatives of the public on a commission to represent us, the people of California, not pg e and not these private owners. So they have it backwards, not, not up straight as to who should represent us. So what we're saying is uh, that also Kamala Harris, who's the Attorney General, why hasn't she prosecuted PV? Why hasn't she prosecuted these people? If you or I do this on our job, we would be fired and, and put in handcuffs and taken away. Yet these commissioners here openly collude uh, with the utilities. They take money, they go to trips paid for by the utilities. Uh, through their foundations, and then they get away with it. So we're saying there's criminal malfeasance here that's cost the lives of people. The, these meters have hurt people. They've injured people. They've killed people. There have been retaliation against whistleblowers. Workers at great expense to their whole careers have spoken out about the dangers. And what happens to them? They get fired and harassed by PG&E, and then pg and these people ignore it. Now, I say that anyone, any whistleblower who speaks out for public health and safety should have real protection. And if somebody tries to fire them, they should be charged criminally. Yeah. 
because these people are standing up for our health and safety, our protection. Instead, this commission allows these utilities to brutally attack and berate people, spy on people. There needs to be a criminal indictment of conspiracy because they've actually conspired illegally to, th to uh, violate the law and attack the health and safety of the people of California. So we're calling for public control of the utilities. We don't want it for profit. We don't believe that energy should be for profit. It should be for people. And as long as for profit, they're going to want meters and they're going to want some more electricity and some more gas, even though it's hurting us and it's hurting the planet. So we need public control where we, the people, can have some voice as to how our energy is being used or misused against us and the environment. And also we're for an elected uh, public utility commission. I don't trust uh, Governor Jerry Brown to appoint people who are going to represent us. There's no consumer activist on that board. They're basically people who kowtow to the utilities. So we say unite also the Uber, uh, the drivers uh, of the uh, cabs who are being under attack with deregulation. We need a broad movement of all those who are fighting for real regulation to join together against this corrupt PUC and to demand that PV be put in jail as an example of what happens when you violate the public trust and you criminally uh, collude with the people you're supposed to regulate. So thank you very much. Here's the, I'm Vicki Sievers, I'm affiliated with the EMF Safety Network. Here's the plan for inside. The message today is we've spoken and spoken and not been heard. So here's what we're doing inside. We have about 25 papers like this. Uh, after Bob speaks, Bob will introduce this concept that we've been here and, and at all of the public hearings, uh, public comment, par public participation hearings in December 2012 and haven't been heard, he will introduce that unfortunate truth and will begin reading names of the ignored. People who were at those hearings or people who were here and have been ignored and we will echo those names. So for example, he would say Winifred Thomas and we'll say Winifred, Winifred Thomas. Thomas. Okay. And then he will read Winifred Thomas's current condition, exiled to the Santa Cruz Mountains, for example. But what happened at today's meeting was completely unexpected to some. KTV's Tom Vekar is in the newsroom, and uh, Tom has kind of turned into a love fest. A bit of a bizarre one. President Peavy may be gone from the CPUC, but trouble will surely follow him. At his final meeting, controversial California Public Utilities Commission President Michael Peavy was given a love fest, 30 straight speakers. You've always, always watched out for the interests of those who have no voice at the table. The elderly, the infirm, the jobless, the disabled, and the poor amongst us. So on the behalf of our children and grandchildren, thank you for your service to California and the planet Earth. Your name now has gained the same levels of folks like the Pope and Ali uh, and, and the energy circles. But as this internal CPUC memorandum shows, the first 30 speakers were there by invitation with no enforcement of the three-minute comment rule, something Senator Jerry Hill noticed. Most of these people who made the comments have some connection to Mr. Peavy in that they had uh, a relationship with him. He's put them in positions that they have. Half the people are here to congratulate you on your retirement, and there's, not to say a little more than half, but the others are here to make sure you're retiring, so. <laughs> I would like to uh, present this dark rose to you in, uh, as an example of dark times. Uh, when a correct transmission of energy is figured out, it will bloom and change. You recognized our problem. You heard two years of testimony. It became so evident that, you were, that there were serious issues with smart meters that you, you enacted a residential opt-out. In 2012, you set up public participation hearings in five locations throughout the state. Bakersfield, Los Angeles, San Clemente, Santa Barbara, Santa Rosa. The hearings were attended by hundreds some drove for hours to tell ALJ Yip Hikagawa heart-wrenching accounts of personal injury, illness, financial hardship, and homelessness. So after inviting people to inform you of the extent and gravity of the problems produced by your misguided program, you now have proposed decisions that address none of them. For example, a former meter reader warned that smart meters were causing fires. 
Larry Nickel died on July 9, 2010, in a house fire that started a day after a smart meter was installed on his home. Winifred Thomas, a former Hewlett Packard professional, too ill to work, homeless, living alone in the Santa Cruz Mountains. Sue Bazo, former UC Berkeley graduate student, unable to continue school, moved eight times, lives on disability, fighting for her life in Arizona. More people that you have ignored in their words. Amy Hartley. Amy Hartley. Santa Rosa. I always slept like a baby. Eleven smart meters were newly installed, and I started experiencing insomnia and darting headaches. Lawrence Gust. Santa Barbara. I'm an electrical engineer. Doctors are reporting that 18% of their patients have health problems because of the smart meters. The power supplies for these meters needs to be changed. Dorothy Sheldon. San Clemente. My doctor warned me against wireless technology because of my pacemaker. I have to opt out. I can't afford it. Jenny Lee. Santa Rosa. Fees are too burdensome for the elders in my community, some of whom cannot afford their medications. Dr. Toral Jelter. Santa Rosa. Severe tinnitus, fatigue, and neuropathy at home and at work. I left my home and closed my private practice. I have lost my home and livelihood to smart meters. Julie Levine. Julie Levine. Los Angeles. Diarrhea, vomiting, pulsing, ringing, pain in my ears, heart racing, palpitations, disorientation, nervousness. Forced from my home, living in a minivan. Roger Knox. Roger Knox. Santa Barbara, the guy who installed the smart meter, was dressed up like a hazmat operator. What does that say about the safety of the meters? Pat Sorensen. Santa Rosa, cancer survivor. Effects of radiation treatments have been debilitating. I do not need exposures to the 89 radiating meters surrounding my apartment. Dave Hubert. Dave Hubert. Santa Rosa, at least 3% of the population is electrosensitive. That's over a million Californians. Joan Renahan. Santa Barbara, computer panel of our new washing machine got burned out. TV, home computer, and printer don't work. Sparks come out of our electrical outlets. Headaches, heart palpitations, and tachycardia. Luis Stampo. Luis Stampo. Santa Rosa. I am hypersensitive to EMS. Ear pain, nausea, and headaches caused by constant smart meter emissions coming through my walls. My small business is in ruins. Stacy Hall. Santa Barbara. The smart meter caused my 75-year-old mother to have tachycardia. She has to have heart surgery. Julie Ostach, Santa Rosa, headaches, tinnitus, extreme sleep deprivation, bruxism, muscle cramps, heart arrhythmia since the smart meter rollout in my neighborhood. Shane Gregory, Shane Gregory. Los Angeles, lost my home in 24 years, sleeping on a park benches, in cars, couch surfed, four brain surgeries, civil and human rights have been violated. Rebecca Helsler, Santa Rosa. Suiting pain in my head, arrhythmia, pressure in my chest after 16 smart meters put outside my condo. Had to leave. I have been isolated in the mountains. Louis Donovan. Louis Donovan. San Clemente. Hospitalized four times for cardiac arrhythmia after a meter was installed near my bedroom window. The meter stopped my heart. Me and my two neighbors opted out. My heart is better now. Pat Wrigley. Santa Rosa. I was a meter reader for nine years, illegally fired because I wouldn't keep quiet when I knew smart meters catch fire and PG&E covers this up. Andrea Walker. Andrea Walker. Los Angeles. Even though I have opted out, the grid is still going through right through my house. It keeps me awake at night. Shelly Masters. Shelly Masters. Santa Rosa. Fatigue, depression, burning skin, drooping eye, hair loss, racing heart, nosebleeds. I have a hard time doing my work. My quality of life has disappeared. Ben Seville. Ben Seville. San Clemente. Eleven smart meters were installed under my young neighbor's bedroom window. He couldn't sleep, started crying, screaming, banging his head on his crib. He went to live with relatives who don't have a meter, and his symptoms went away. We can choose not to use other wireless devices, but we have no choice about the smart grid. Amy O'Hare. Santa Rosa, I am a mother. 
No parent should have to face opt-out fees to protect a child from smart meter emissions radiating from the other side of a bedroom wall. Hello, commissioners. I am a resident of San Francisco for 50 years this last September. I've been in an apartment for 35 years. I have a condo on Petrero Hill, and I cannot be in that building because of the Wi-Fi um, I am because it's subsidized by the city uh, for artists. It was supposed to be the, the um, to show the world how to do a work live building. Okay, it's subsidized by the city. I'm supposed to be living there because it's subsidized. I'm now being threatened with them taking away this condo without giving me a nickel for it because I can't be there because of the Wi-Fi. There are 24 smart meters on that building. There's 30 Wi-Fis. In this room here with this Coronet electro smog meter that you can get from Stop Smart Meters, you can see that the Wi-Fi in this room is thousands of times higher than the World Health Organization recommends. And I need to tell you that now I have to sleep in the apartment where actually all my neighbors are medical people. And because they read the materials I gave them from the EMF safety network, they have all opted out completely, all of them. Um, I get screeching tinnitus, headaches, and now I have a new condition. It's happened uh, how it began. I may have told you before, but I know I have it now. I only get it when I'm in a room with a lot of Wi-Fi, and that is called trigeminal neuralgia, and it is where my half of my face goes numb. I'm letting it happen today so I can speak to you and tell you this all started from one smart meter almost exactly five years ago. One meter was installed seven feet below the head of the bed of the apartment for three months. I did not know why I was dizzy, more dizzy. Then I was staggering. Then I had memory problems so bad I could not speak. My face was bright red and I wasn't hot. I had uh, incredible insomnia. I still cannot sleep without very strong sleeping pills. Even though all the smart meters are off our building, I'm still subject to the Wi-Fi from the neighbors. If the guy is home with his server router on his computer, I have to take stronger sleeping pills. The, 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 TN, the, the trigeminal neuralgia is really frightening to have, have your face go numb. Um, it's been diagnosed by uh, the California Public Utility, uh, excuse me, the California Pacific Medical Center. Um, and I'm, I'm mostly just today, um, should, have, should be at home on the phone because I'm being threatened with losing the condo because I cannot be there. And I cannot, the last two times I was there were for meetings. The one, um, I left the building, they, they moved my agenda item up so I could leave earlier. I was so, my head hurt so bad and I was so disturbed by what they were talking about in the meeting that on the way home, I went through a red light. I'm the safest driver in the in the in the country. I never go through. I went through. I got a $500 ticket. I was there the other another two weeks ago when I left. My face was bright, bright red. That is a very one of the top classic radiation symptoms of uh, health symptoms. Here's my last little thing to tell you. The sun, moon, earth, and all living things on earth function at 7.83 hertz. Smart meters emit radiation many times thousands of stronger and worse and are also pulsed and damaging the DNA in every living thing it passes through as it travels for up to two miles, even through brick walls. Add to that that the radiation from Wi-Fi, WiMAX, radar, and, and cell phones and cell towers signals have been heaped on our modern lives technical industries that profit from this damage say that's okay because it's not been tested. Excuse me, that's not only illogical, it has been tested. 60 years of hard science international reports have already proven health damage by radiation. It therefore follows that the frequencies thousands of times stronger cause much more damage to the DNA and all life forms and are especially dangerous for children. Please consider the health of, it's a lot more than 3% of the population, I'll tell you. And people are getting sick and they don't know why. And it's the smart meters and it's the Wi-Fi. And your job description is to protect us. And you know about this and I'm begging you for some help. Okay. Steve Seltzer. 
be followed by Laurel Carroll. Laura Carroll, excuse me. Uh, Steve Zeltzer speaking for United Public Workers for Action and No Nukes Action. I mean, I, I don't uh, want you to go away with retirement from this commission because really you belong in jail. Oh, okay, that's yeah. enough. You belong in jail. And you had an hour and a half here of accolades, but none of the corruption came. Look, it's a, it's a public meeting, and I don't mind you speaking, but I don't like the accusatory things you, you're accusing me of personally. Just talk generally. I, you could speak, but, you can, but let's, can you, I'm counseling you to use your words, choose your words carefully. That's all I'm asking. This is a public Forum. I pay as a taxpayer to be here and to have a right to speak under the Brown Code and other laws. I'm now, I, I say I'm that asking you to be polite. Is I, that a, is that a reason? Look, the thing? newspapers are talking about emails between these commissioners and the public utilities and the and PG&E. That's an issue of corruption. Yeah. Yeah. So you're on the. I mean, this is. I mean, this is a, a, a system problem in which PG&E and Southern California Edison and these utilities are running this commission. So you're on the list to speak so about smart meters, is, so I'm really interested I'm about in hearing smart what your meters. comment yes. is on that topic. Yes, I'm about Thank smart you. meters. Yes. What about the smart people meters? of California have a right to a commission that's not tainted with corporate relations and corporate interests, and that's exactly what's going on here. That's okay. exactly what's going on All here. Right. That's why you should be elected, and that's why there should be criminal prosecution by the Attorney General of any commissioners that have conflicts of interest. And also, you have a record of being a bully, a workplace bully against the staff of the PUC who are intimidated, who are threatened by you. You laugh? They had a private meeting here, which was leaked to the press in the San Francisco Chronicle, about how they were afraid to speak up as a result of the workplace bullying led by you, the chair of the PUC. Now, what kind of operation is this? When workers here who want to do a job for the people of California, who want to be responsible, are afraid to speak out. Okay, that thank you. shows that you need to be acted on. The Attorney General, okay. you need to be. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, moving on to the energy agenda. Um, item 60 and 60A. This we discussed at our last meeting. This is the matter that brought some people here. This morning, it's the, it's the smart meter opt-out charges and fee. Um, item 60 and 60A are the proposed and alternate decisions regarding smart meter opt-out charges and fees. The Commission has deliberated on, this, on these issues in this proceeding for almost two years now, and I cannot be more pleased that I am today because with this meeting, we will finally make a determination and end some uncertainties about ongoing fee structure. The Commission envisions a safe, reliable, and efficient electric grid for all Californians, and smart meters, uh, I think, are a fundamental part of that. And I, I, I hope to those that, and it's frustrating that so few people that, that uh, came before us this morning to speak on this issue are not around here to hear the, the, the ultimate outcome. But I, I, I'm reminded of what uh, Commissioner Picker said at the last meeting, having been before he came on this commission, a board member of the Sacramento Municipal Utilities District, and dealing, uh, seeing that issue firsthand in Sacramento, which is a municipal utility which has installed all the same kind of smart meters, uh, the importance of, of uh, the, the importance in terms of safety and uh, knowledge, safety, speed, uh, and restoration, and, and outages like the Napa earthquake and all, I think are are, are considerations. That weigh that weigh very heavily uh, on us as we as we act in this area, and uh, we have to be extremely con conscious of uh, and that we're serving the overall public good. Okay, uh, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. aye.